While Germany struggles with the long-term effects of immigration, the American Congress can't agree on how to control our borders. Despite Republicans controlling the Congress, they are widely expected to leave out funding for President Trump's proposed border wall in a spending bill that has to pass this week to keep the government from shutting down. If Republicans won't back a wall tonight, we ask, what is next for immigration? Senator Tom Tillis represents the state of North Carolina. He opposes the wall and is trying to hammer out an immigration plan he hopes can get bipartisan support. Senator Tillis joins us on the set here. Senator, thanks for coming on. Glad to be here. So what do you and By think? the way, I don't oppose the wall. You don't? Yeah, I oppose, I oppose putting a 30-foot structure on the top of a 33,000-foot uh, sheer cliff. Right. I oppose taking down two fences that are uh, separated with a all-weather road that Border Patrol uh, patrols in California that's working. I, I oppose things that the people on the ground think are not in their best interest, and those are the folks that go out and put on the bulletproof vest every day and uh, have to actually protect the border, who tell me that the wall in certain places makes sense, but intelligence, reconnaissance, and other structures make sense elsewhere. So it's just a common sense way of But they don't get to make policy. I, mean, we're not, the border. I mean, I'm totally for the Border Patrol. They have a hard yeah. job, and I admire them, but they don't get to make the policies. You do. And you're well, that's right. To, you're in to in do consultation that. with the Homeland Secretary, General Kelly, who was uh, the head of Southern Command, who also says that we need a people technology infrastructure approach, securing the border, securing the border way that countries like Israel, who I would think most people would tend to agree have some really bad actors on the other side of not just a wall, but fences, walls where it's appropriate, and a combination of structures that make the most sense for the people who have the job of protecting the border. But the people voted for a wall. And President Trump got a lot of votes, a lot of votes in your states, a million more votes he got in 2016 than you got in 14. It was a different cycle, but people endorsed the wall. But what, if, what, what sense would it make to take down a structure that's working and replace it with something that the people on the ground think wouldn't? It, it's well, it depends a matter of if you would want to replace a wall solution. with a wall. But so what percentage of the southern border do you think should have a wall? I think it depends on the geography. Whether or not you put a wall on the Rio Grande uh, would depend on a number of factors, not the least of which is we may do it, but it could take decades because of all the property rights and uh, condemnations that we'd have to do to accomplish it. There's a lot of private property owners there. So does it it makes sense there in some cases absolutely if you go around the Rio Grande Valley there are very clearly places where a wall is a structure that would that would create pinch points that then other technologies could be used to actually so interdict. what I mean just because I think it's a fair question for voters you know, I voted for this guy he promised a big beautiful wall like how much well that are we you know, the, the, the the border is about 2,000 miles uh, the the California sector seems to be working the way it is there's probably a combination that would go in Arizona and the West Texas uh, New Mexico sector, and then a slightly different, the exact number I've actually asked for, what parts of, where, does, where do the geography and migration patterns make sense? Does it make sense to put a, a large structure in a place that is really a badlands, where ISR may be a better way to do it? Wait, so you, you don't want any border wall in California? Uh, if, it, if it makes sense, but the fence is working. We, the, the problem that we have there is actually something that a wall won't fix, and that's tunnels. So are we going to use a different technology to find out how they've gotten around it? The other thing are sight lines. Tucker, this is a very important point. If I remove all the sight lines, and I can't see when the bad actors are coming. If I have a 30-foot foot structure, and if I don't have intelligence and reconnaissance, then I literally only have maybe a two or three-foot right. section between a bad actor and a Border Patrol person that can't see what they're about I, to I do. I guess the question is, why couldn't you do, do both? And the long-term question can. is, there's going and to be a should. Democratic Congress at some point. Mm -hmm. and border controls that are easy to pull back, like personnel, for example, can be pulled back pretty quickly by n new administrations or, or new Congresses. So why not build something permanent and create security for generations? Well, in part because I don't know if it's the most productive use of the money that we're going to have. We also have to understand that the border, the legal border crossings right now, and I was in Laredo, one of the, the, uh, the bridges there, the Border Patrol agents said that they, uh, they seize 30 kilograms of methamphetamine every 48 hours. That's 300,000 doses of methamphetamine. And they say they're only interdicting maybe 10, 15 percent of all the drugs that are coming across. I'd rather spend the money we have now on helping them seize more of those drugs and secure the border. And we'd have to fight the political fight. But I think if we secure the border, the American people will be behind keeping that in place. But why would we give amnesty to anybody before we do that? I don't that? think we should give amnesty. Well, according to the Wall Street Journal, you're proposing temporary legal status for people brought to this country yeah. illegally by their parents before completing Ronald Reagan the border. is somebody who I know you have a lot of respect for. He had a catastrophic failure in providing amnesty in 1986 to 3 million people. Amnesty has proven not to work. 
it grows the problem. What we're trying to do is figure out how do you stabilize the problem, secure the border so the problem can't grow anymore, stabilize the problem by giving some sort of temporary protected status that does not provide a path to citizenship, does not provide any fast path to citizenship, while we solve the problem. Otherwise, but they're going to be here anyway. But why would you do that? I mean, why wouldn't the priority be to make certain that we control our borders, which we don't? Well, the pri that should be the priority. But why would, why, you, why would you, before it. you enforce E-Verify, which is a pretty quick way to stop people but from hiring you're illegals? You're reading words it? I didn't write. I've actually passed E-Verify. As Speaker of the House, we passed the E-Verify mandate about four or five years ago. E-Verify needs to be the law of the land in, in the uh, United States. Before any kind of amnesty? Absolutely. They have to go in tandem. Imagine there are, there are a lot of people who are abusing the visa systems that we have today. We need to make an example out of the people who are abusing it. Well, I agree. Because it's at the expense of the people who have a legitimate need but why, for the why would, we, why would we provide any kind of amnesty to anybody before enforcing those laws? That's what I don't, I don't think understand. you would. I think it's a matter of how do you stabilize things and then come up with strategies for dealing with the illegally present. People who think that we could all of a sudden round up 11 million or 14 million, however many there are, and mass deport them. I don't think that that's. A I don't think any solution. person is suggesting that. You could say that we're going to punish people who employ them. Period. Oh, I agree, and okay. we should. Okay, but but at but the same the time, I don't understand point of passing E-Verify on a national basis so that you have a basis for enforcing that with employers who knowingly hire illegally present. But why persons. would you? I still don't understand why you would do that in tandem with giving people amnesty. Because we got to solve the problem. The biggest problem here, Tucker, is Republicans and Democrats have been talking about solving this problem for 40 years, and they've all failed. They don't so, seem to want to solve it. Well, I think the way I think the thing that we haven't done is paired up things that would get support from the other side of the aisle with law enforcement measures. E-verify. Increased enforcement for bad actors, for people who are abusing visa policies. These sorts of things where there's a okay. consequence for not following a, a reform process that I think can work over time. And it's not perfect. And people that think that I've proposed something have read a bill I haven't written yet. Okay. But I am proposing actually being a Congress and a party right. that solves the problem versus being the, the latest generation of people who promise and never deliver. Senator, thanks for joining us. Thank you.